Can everybody hear me? Also in the back? Okay, great, thanks. Thanks for this uh, introduction, Claire. And thanks uh, to the organization for inviting me to this uh, conference. Uh, with this study group, we performed a systematic review and uh, I'm more than happy to present the results uh, today. <coughs> well, Claire already introduced me. Um, and let's start with the background. Um, yeah, uh, as you heard um, uh, yesterday and today, groin pain in athletes is difficult to treat. And from um, two systematic reviews, we know that the best available evidence on treatment of groin pain in athletes was exercise therapy. Uh, but the evidence could be regarded as limited. But there are also limitations in these uh, two systematic reviews. Uh, one uh, systematic review uh, did not uh, include the quality assessment in the majority of the studies. And uh, the other systematic review only was on conservative treatment. And a recent Cochrane review uh, concluded that there is ins insufficient evidence for a specific conservative treatment. So we aimed to examine the existing available scientific literature uh, on the efficacy of both conservative and surgical treatment. Uh, the second aim was to evaluate the relationship between study quality and treatment success, uh, athletes returning to play, the time to return to play, and publication year. And before the start of the study, we um, registered our study protocol with the Prospero uh, International Prospective Database to minimize the risk of bias. So we started with a study selection. Two independent reviewers uh, did a, a study selection in nine uh, medical databases. Uh, and there were uh, four major criteria of, for inclusion. The population had to be uh, athletes with groin pain, and we excluded uh, athletes uh, with hip-related hip groin pain and nerve-related pathology. Uh, the outcome measure had to be quantitative, like pain scales, functional outcome, uh, or uh, patient satisfaction, etc. Uh, the design had to be an RCT, a controlled clinical trial, or a case series, uh, with more than 10 patients per treatment arm. And uh, the final, the last uh, criterion was that the um, article had to be written in the English language. And one reviewer did the data extraction. Um, we did a quality assessment with the Downs and Black quality assessment tool. Um, as you heard yesterday, it's a reliable tool for both non-randomized and randomized intervention studies. Um, the original tool consists of 27 items and uh, in the modified version, uh, 27 points could be scored maximally. Um, two uh, reviewers independently assessed the study quality. Uh, and as you can imagine, it was a horrible job. Uh, but uh, Adam Weir and Andrea Cerner did a great job with that. Um, and we considered 19 points or more uh, as a high quality study. And then the study could be included in the final analysis on the efficacy of treatment. Um, because there was a, a large heterogeneity of the studies, uh, we used the best evidence synthesis. Uh, we used the Van Tilde scale. And strong evidence could be provided by two or more high quality studies. Moderate evidence by one high quality study. Limited evidence could not be provided uh, because normally it is provided by uh, multiple low quality studies. Um, and as we excluded these uh, low quality studies, uh, we could not detect uh, potential or, or treatments for which potential limited evidence existed. Uh, conflict conflicted evidence um, uh, was uh, present in case of uh, inconsistent findings and no evidence when no studies could be found. So here you can see the uh, results of our search strategy. Um, our initial search uh, yielded more than 5,000 records. Uh, and finally, 72 articles could be included. Um, in the next slides, I'd like to uh, give you the, the descriptive results of the included studies. Um, 71 studies were on chronic groin pain and one on acute. Uh, the study design um, was a case series in 90% of the cases, and most of them were retrospective. 
Uh, in 3% it was a controlled clinical trial and in 7% an RCT. Treatment was co conservative in 25% of the cases, uh, mainly passive physical therapy or exercise therapy or injection therapy. Uh, and uh, the majority was on corticosteroid injections or prolotherapy. Um, surgery uh, was examined in 75% uh, of the cases and the top three was an open hernia repair, uh, a laparoscopic hernia repair and an adductor tenotomy. We found 33 different diagnoses in uh, the systematic review. And uh, the main established diagnosis was a sportsman's hernia. And other frequently diagnosed entities were an unspecific term of chronic groin pain, osteitis pubis, and adductor-related groin pain. And it's worth mentioning that uh, in 14% of the studies, multiple diagnoses were established. So now <coughs> I'd like to provide a summary of means. Uh, so many studies uh, included uh, football players as the majority uh, of the population, so in 61% uh, of the studies. The mean follow-up time was 28 months with a very large standard deviation. In the intervention groups, uh, the mean treatment success was 84%, uh, the mean return to play 91%, and the time to return to play 11 weeks. Uh, and I think as a clinician it's very important because uh, yeah, when a patient comes to you with uh, groin pain, you can counsel him that it can almost take uh, three months. And uh, given a large standard deviation, uh, even a large group can take even longer. Now the results of the quality assessment. Only four studies, so 6%, uh, were of high quality. And the included study scored worst on blinding of the subjects, blinding of the outcome assessors, and concealment of treatment, uh, treatment allocation. So this is one of my uh, most important slides. Uh, it's uh, the results on the best evidence synthesis. Uh, and I'm happy to tell you all that uh, of the four included high quality studies, all first authors are presenting in this treatment session. Uh, so I won't go into de detail about uh, the treatment options. Um, but there was moderate evidence in a long-standing adductor-related groin pain for active physical training compared to passive uh, physical therapy modalities. Multimodal treatment, uh, including uh, a manual therapy technique and a running program, enabled quicker time to return to play compared to active training. Uh, and a partial adductor longus release uh, resulted in a significant decrease in pain over time. Uh, and for the sportsman's hernia, with or without adductor-related groin pain, <coughs> laparoscopic inguinal surgery with or without adductor release uh, uh, was uh, better in pain release uh, compared to uh, conservative treatment. Well, on this uh, graph you can see the rela relationship between study quality and treatment success. Uh, on the horizontal axis, the Downs and Black quality score, the higher, the better methodological quality. And uh, on the vertical axis, the treatment success. And you can see a significant correlation. It's an inverse correlation, also a moderate correlation uh, between study quality and treatment success. So the higher the methodological quality, uh, the lower the treatment success. We saw the same tendency uh, for the percentage of uh, athletes returning to play but this was not uh, significant. And uh, we also did not find a relationship between time to return to play and the uh, quality. And the same accounts for uh, the publication year and the study quality. So more recent studies uh, did not have a higher study quality. So in summary, only 6% of the included studies are of high quality. There's moderate evidence for a number of treatment options in adductor-related groin pain and sportsman's hernia. Uh, there's a, a, a lower study quality is associated with higher treatment success, and this is also known as the Coleman effect, uh, because Coleman and colleagues also found uh, such an, uh, a relationship in uh, patients with patellotendinopathy. And study quality does not significantly improve over time. Of course, there are some limitations in this uh, systematic review. Uh, we only included high-quality studies in the final analysis, and uh, we also could have included um, um, uh, 
the RCTs, which is a common method as well. Uh, and I'm aware that uh, multiple low quality studies uh, can provide inf useful information as well. Uh, but the fact that there, that there was an inverse relationship between uh, study quality and treatment success validates our choice uh, to not include the low quality studies. Um, furthermore, the large number of disagreements uh, in the quality assessment, 11% uh, uh, of the quality assessments uh, resulted in a disagreement. Um, this could have been caused by the fact um, uh, that <coughs> the Downs and Black scale is not optimally des described on some points, mainly on the uh, external ge generalizability. Um, it could also have been caused by the observation that many authors did not follow the uh, consort or stroke guidelines for their uh, methods and results. Another major uh, limitation is the lack of diagnostic criteria. We found 33 different diagnoses in the 72 included articles and there's a large variability in the described di diagnostic criteria. And here you can see such an example. Um, these are two stu uh, studies or study groups uh, establishing the diagnosis of sportsman's hernia. And the first one established uh, this diagnosis in case of a history of more than one year of complaints uh, with uh, a failed non-operative treatment. And the second one uh, has multiple diagnostic criteria uh, based on history, physical examination, and radiological examination. And you can imagine if this is uh, such a large difference, it makes it hard to compare uh, studies in the literature and compare treatment effects. So what are the new findings and our take-home messages? Uh, only a few studies on treatment of athletes with groin pain are of high quality. Lower study quality is associated with higher treatment success, and there is moderate evidence for exercise, therapy, multimodal treatment, and adductor tenotomy in long-standing adductor uh, groin pain and for surgery in sportsman's hernia. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>